All right, so we're going to call the meeting of the Board of Public Works to order uh, on May 25th, 2023. Uh, could you please call the roll? Commissioner Moriarty? Here. Commissioner Shoneman? Here. Commissioner Lemon? Here. Commissioner Shea? Mayor Donches? Here. All right, thank you very much. Uh, there's a uh, motion to approve the agenda. Uh, Commissioner Shoneman? Move to approve the agenda as amended. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item three, approval of the minutes. Commissioner Lemon. I motion to approve the minutes of the Board of Public Works meeting of April 27, 2023. Anyone? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Public comment. Is there any member of the public who wishes to address the Board of Public Works? Uh, apparently not. And let's the record show that uh, Commissioner Shea has arrived at 401. Uh, Board of Aldermen referrals. Um, uh, we have item A. Uh, uh, Commissioner Moriarty. Thank you, Mayor. The motion will be for a favorable recommendation for uh, R23119, changing the purpose of up to $354,658 of unexpended board proceeds from three wastewater projects to the sewer improvement project. And. Um you want to give us uh, sure. Mr. Hudson? <clears throat> sure. So Dan Hudson, city engineer. So this is uh, repurposing uh, surplus funds from three projects, uh, which are a storage tank facility, aeration blower upgrade, and dewatering equipment replacement. These are wastewater projects that were bonded. Um, so the, this is requesting to repurpose those funds into the sewer fund where that money can be used for other projects of similar duration. The bonds are usually 20 or 30 years. Anything we would do, such as digging and replacing pipes, lining pipes, will have a useful life uh, um, longer than 30 years. So it's appropriate to uh, repurpose those funds that way. Any discussion? Commissioner Shea. Um, for, the, um, for the three wastewater projects, I imagine that those had somewhat of a federal match. Do you, do you recall? I don't have specifics on that. I mean, it's it's typical that um, we're, we're if they're done under like an SIRF process, they're low interest loans or, or bonds, um, and then sometimes there's principal forgiveness through the state aid grant program. Um, so sometimes we get like a two percent uh, payment back uh, based upon the capital. But I, I don't know if these particular projects uh, benefited from those or not. Okay. Thank you. All right, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item B, um, we're going to seek a tabling of that because there's still discussions going on with Penichuk and the Board of Aldermen who would have to approve this. <coughs> so without objection, I'll just say that that meeting, that will come on the be tabled until the next meeting. Um, Next item, area six, wastewater. Now, Mr. Boucher is not here. He's on his way, so Mayor, maybe we could skip ahead to the street department. So if there's no objection, we'll go to item seven, uh, street department, and come back to uh, wastewater. Um, item A, Commissioner Shea. Uh, the motion is to approve change order number two to the Fimble Garage Door Contract with Fimble Garage Doors of Merrimack, New Hampshire in the amount of $145,594.70. Funding for this contract is through Department 161, Streets, Fund, Capital, Activity, Overhead Doors. Uh, Superintendent Ibarra is uh, sick today, um, so I'll, I'll speak to this motion. So this is the, we have 26 overhead doors at the Street Department. Um, this is to replace the last 15. Um, so um, this is a big safety issue, as you can imagine, because these are really large doors. So um, this will uh, now will ha they'll all be 
um, updated. So. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item B, Commissioner Shonen. I move to approve the award of the fiscal year 23 <clears throat> pavement markings contract to Markings Incorporated of Pembroke, Mass. The amount not to exceed $162,000. Funding for this contract is through Department 161 Streets, Fund General, Account Classification 54, and other services. So this is our annual striping contract. We're excited to work with Marking Inc. This is a new company. We haven't worked with them before, uh, but they have a good reputation, and we think they'll, they'll do a good job. And this, of course, includes long lines and cross, some crosswalks. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Now, Mr. Uh, Boucher is here, so we'll return to wastewater. Um, under wastewater, we have item A. Um, Commissioner Lemon. I motion to approve the user warrants as presented. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the purchase of chemical sodium bisulfite in the amount of $800,000 from PVS. Eight, eight, sorry, 80000 You said 800000 Oh, I'm sorry, 80000 <laughs> 80000 correction, from PVS Chemical Solutions. Funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater Fund Wastewater Account Classification 61 Supplies and Materials. Dave Boucher, Wastewater Superintendent. Uh, this is for the annual purchase of sodium bisulfite for FY24. Uh, we participate in the Northeast Merrimack Valley Chemical Consortium uh, bid process to get the best uh, bid. Uh, sodium bisulfite is a chemical we use on a daily basis. Uh, it's used to remove chlorine from the wastewater before it's discharged into the Merrimack River. And uh, PVS was the low bidder on the, in, the, in the consortium. Be able to answer any questions? Anyone? Just out of curiosity, while we're on the topic of chemicals, how, how much do we attend to benzene in wastewater output, and is that an important thing in wastewater? I know in drinking water it's, it's an issue, um, but while you bring up chlorine, I think they're related, and I figured I, I would ask just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's, it's not in our discharge permit. Uh, but it is in our uh, industrial pretreatment permit. So when we permit industries, uh, they're regulated as far as what they can put down the sewer. And so they test for it on an annual basis and they send it to us. But they're not required to put it down the drain. So we monitor them. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item C. Um, Commissioner Shea. Uh, the motion is to approve the purchase of, I think we just, oh no, it's a different sodium, okay. Uh, the motion is to approve the purchase of the chemical sodium hypochlorite in the amount of $420,000 from Univar USA, Inc. of Mooresville, Pennsylvania. Funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater, Fund Wastewater, Account Classification 61, Supplies and Materials. Dave Boucher, Wastewater Superintendent. Uh, for this one, we also participated in the uh, chemical consortium uh, to get the lowest bid price. Uh, sodium hypochlorite is a disinfection we use in our effluent to make sure it's, uh, the wastewater is disinfected before it goes to the river. Uh, utilize it on a daily basis. We also use it in our odor control systems uh, to oxidize uh, the odors. And uh, Univar was the low bidder on this one. We have previously been using Borden and Remington, uh, but we've also used Univire in the past, so we know they're a reputable company. All right. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item D, <coughs> Commissioner Shoneman. 
I move to approve the Class 1 service <clears throat> on the three Turlex brand blowers in an amount not to exceed $32,910 from BCV Systems of Springfield, Missouri. Funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater, Fund Wastewater, Account Classification 55 Other Services. A. Hey, Boucher, Wastewater Superintendent. Uh, so. Wastewater has three Turblix blowers. They're high efficiency blowers that supply air to our microorganisms in one of our tanks. Uh, they run 24 seven and uh, they're high efficiency blo uh, blowers and BCV is the company that services this particular model of blower. Uh, unfortunately, they, they don't, they're not nearby so it costs higher. They send someone out and they're here for like three days servicing each one. Um, but we've used them several times in the past. They're a good company. And this is just an annual service for these blowers. All right, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Item E, Commissioner Lemon. I motion to approve the creation of a third wastewater foreman position at the wastewater department. Starting salary for this position will not exceed $35.67 per hour. Funding will be through Department 169, Wastewater, Fund, Wastewater, Account Classification, 51 Salaries and Wages. Dave Boucher, Wastewater Superintendent. Uh, currently we have two foremen at the facility. Uh, over the years we've been putting in more high-tech equipment to treat our process, meet regulations. Uh, also we have new regulations in our collection systems. So outside the facility. Uh, we've added employees to that aspect so we can maintain that better. Uh, but that's also required one of our foremen to be outside the facility more often managing that. We've got the upgrades of our pump station, a lot of new equipment out there going on. So uh, we kind of only have one foreman in the facility to oversee both operations portion of the facility and maintenance portion of the facility, which can be overwhelming. So this would help alleviate that. and. Uh, help us to maintain a uh, nice facility and keep and, things up. And I'll just add that we had this discussion at our budget meeting. We mentioned it and we did. Yep. And this is a position that we have to do for, if you recall. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Now we're in the park rec. Um, item A, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the purchase of a 2023 John Deere 4066R for a price of $67,497.66 pursuant to source wall contract number 031121-DAC. Funding will be through Department 177 Parks and Recreation Fund Trust. Activity Surf. Uh, Brian Conant, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this tractor will be used by the Parks and Rec Department to accomplish uh, many different aspects um, from fertilizing the fields, uh, different cultural practices that we, uh, you know, attachments that we have that hook up to the tractor. Um, you know, it uh, helps us out tremendously, an integral part of our uh, fall leaf cleanup operations. Um, so I'd, I'd be, this is replacing a 22-year-old uh, tractor that will then become a backline unit um, until it's no longer feasible to keep up and running. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Shea. The motion is to approve a three-year contract with Pyrotechnico Fireworks, Inc. of Jaffrey, New Hampshire, uh, for 4th of July fireworks display at a total contract value of $63,000. Uh, funding will be through Department 177, Park and Recreation, Fund, General, Account Category, 55 Other Services. Brian Conant, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. Um, as you're all well aware, um, we have a wonderful fireworks display at Holman Stadium on the 4th of July. Um, this is a, we put this out to bid. This is a three-year contract with an optional fourth. 
Um, and um, one thing uh, the company did relay to us, uh, which works out to us uh, in our favor, with going out with a three-year contract is we're going to have 2026 in the books. Um, a lot of municipalities reach out to these companies the year of. Um, they're estimating that that cost will be in 2026 to celebrate the 250-year uh, anniversary to be about 35 to 45,000, um, and we're going to be at around 25. So that'll be beneficial. But I'd be happy to answer any other questions about this. I just uh, Brian, just to add something to this. Um, this Pyrotechnica is actually the same company. They they acquired Atlas, uh, who has been doing the, the fireworks displays, which everybody has been raving about. So I did want to let you know this is the same company they were just acquired. Thank Atlas you. was acquired by this company. I remember, since I live really close to the stadium, there, there was a change a few years to make them quieter. It's the same company, right? Because it's been a huge difference from yes, where, where I sit. I mean, we used to have, every time the fireworks went off, all the car alarms would go off, which was alarm. really annoying. <laughs> and that has not happened in the past few years. Yes, this is, I think, same company. at least same three company. years, the yeah. last three years. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir, Shea. Does this include the service of, of setting them up and firing them off and cleaning them up and the whole thing? Not cleaning them up. Not cleaning them up. Well, they'll clean up the display, but a lot of the stuff obviously Lies. blows yep. in the wind and we'll pick up the rest. So okay. it is quite a, a pickup day the day after this event. So, Do we have a little extra in there for 26 or what do you, regular, I mean our, our display is pretty significant as it is. So, Yes, I think, I think there is something special in there for 2026. Yes. Cool. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item C, Commissioner Shannon. I move to approve the changes to the Stellar Stadium attendant job description and increase the hourly rate by 30 cents per hour. I assume. Brian Conant, Superintendent of the Parks and Recreation. Um, what I'm trying to accomplish here is to make this position more self-efficient. Um, and currently right now we'll, you know, as needed basis, we will spray the weeds in the parking lot, the curbside, um, around the David Dean Skate Park. That's why I want to include the pesticide license um, so that we don't have to send a crew over there. The person that's the stadium attendant should be able to take care of it. Um, and I also feel with the David Dean Skate Park being right close to the Stello Stadium that the person there should be responsible for the maintenance of that as well, which is fairly limited, but I'd be happy to answer any questions on this. <coughs> All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Conan. Now Thank we're you. on to engineering. <coughs> Mr. Hudson, uh, you're up. <laughs> oh, um, oh, item A, Commissioner Lemon. I motion to approve the sewer service permits and fees as submitted. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the following poll license petitions as listed in the staff report. Anyone, any discussion on any of that? Question? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item C, Commissioner Shea. Uh, the motion is to approve Amendment 1 to the Engineering Services Contract for Pavement Management Services with Stantec Consulting Service, Inc. of Burlington, Mass., in an amount not to exceed $34,700. Funding will be through Department 160 Admin Engineering Fund Bond Activity Paving. <clears throat> so, Dan Hudson, City Engineer. So. Santec Consulting has served us for many years, providing uh, updates to our road network evaluation, um, typically doing a third of the city each year. This year we're modifying uh, the program a little bit. We're going to look at the northern two-thirds of the city, but instead of doing the, the deep dive on all the conditions, we're going to focus on the, the roads that have been recently paved or are in the do-nothing category um, or, or just slightly less than that. The idea of that is we want to 
kind of build and, and build out a preservation program, a more robust preservation program. So he's done a lot of paving, we want to preserve the pavement we have. Um, we know the roads that we looked at previously that were in poor condition before that haven't been paved are still in poor condition. Um, so, you know, we can get a, a new number on those, but it's kind of less important from our perspective um, to, to looking at the, uh, the better roads and making sure that we're preserving those through crack sealing and uh, fog sealing and various other treatments. So, so that's, that's, that's the uh, proposal this year under this contract is to, uh, is to focus on those, those things. Anyone? Questions? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item D, Commissioner Schoen. I move to consider the hardship request <clears throat> from Hayner Swanson Incorporated on behalf of RAK Construction Services LLC to excavate to install sewer water and gas at 58 to 60 Lone Street. So again, Dan, that's the city engineer. I'll just briefly, briefly introduce this. Um, uh, we have guests here who can speak uh, to it in detail, um, but the request is <coughs> due to a, a new subdivision and construction of a house to, to install the, the water, sewer, and gas services to that uh, new house. Um, <coughs> there is a, one mitigating factor for the city, and that is that the, across the street is a house that has a sewer service, which we believe is in disrepair. There's been a little sinkhole in the road, so um, it, it may be prudent for the board to consider this one in light of the fact that, you know, we, we can repair that and then these guys can come in and do their thing and then they'll restore the whole roadway in accordance with the moratorium requirements. Um, so that's something to consider. We probably are going to be forced to fix the abutting sewer um, issue regardless. So I just want to make the board aware of that fact and I'll turn it over to the, the, uh, the applicants here to describe the proposal and their hardship. All right, so um, our guests are here on that. So we'll just come on up. And just introduce yourselves when you speak, just so we get it right on the record. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Go ahead. Good afternoon, uh, members of the commission and uh, city officials. Uh, my name is Brad Westgate. I'm a lawyer with Weiner Bennett, 402 Amherst Street, uh, Suite 302 in Nashua. And uh, with me is Ethan Beals of Hainer Swanson, project engineers. And sitting on the side is Rob Crowley, who's the principal of RAK Construction Services, LLC. Uh, we appreciate the time you've given us today to address uh, this matter. If, if I may, Mr. Mayor, can I give a little bit of background? and just sort of set the stage, and um, I was going to turn it over to, uh, to Ethan to uh, detail a little bit better um, the, search, the circumstances involving these sewer water connections and the uh, sinkhole or pavement failure issue that exists in the nearby on Lund Street. So uh, this property is uh, in the RB zone. It's two lots. One's a vacant lot. Recent subdivision after a variance was granted to uh, permit the subdivision than planning board approval of the subdivision last December. Uh, the existing house on the property occupies one lot and the other one's vacant, as mentioned. Mr. Crowley's company purchased this property uh, late last year. Prior to that is when the ZBA had granted the variance and subsequent to his purchase is when the lots were subdivided through Hayner Swanson. When we were before the ZBA, we had indicated Mr. Crowley would be the likely buyer of this property, he, which he did. He's in the process of renovating the existing house. He's done renovations on some properties in Abbott Street before and is experienced with that. The existing house and the grounds around it were, were in very poor condition. Uh, there was a dilapidated in-ground pool, concrete decking around it, uh, tremendous overgrowth, poor fencing, a lot of uh, sort of undesirable characteristics. So. What Mr. Crowley's been doing has been in the process now of renovating the existing house, both inside, including uh, utility systems, HVAC, wiring, plumbing, and the like, fully uh, doing the inside work itself, uh, then sprucing up the outside as well. He's removed the dilapidated pool, 
uh, has also um, uh, taken down a garage that was there, uh, gotten rid of some of the concrete as well, and cleaned up the bad ve vegetation. Just to set, set the stage of what's now to, to, uh, to occur. Property serviced by water, sewer, gas, as well as electric power, telephone, and cable, uh, television. The idea is to build a new single family home on the vacant lot, but that's the lo lot that needs the sewer connections for water and, um, and sewer as well, those service connections which Mr. Beals will detail. Also a new driveway would service that new lot. So it's coincidental, frankly, that there's the uh, pavement failure issue right in the almost the exact same area where the sewer connection is and water connections are about to occur. They're a little further on the other side of the street, as you'll see in the plans. Um, but all of this gives an opportunity to uh, both permit um, Mr. Crowley to make his connections within the five-year time frame uh, and also sort of set the stage so coordination can be done with the city to have them go in and deal with the, uh, the matter that uh, Mr. Hudson referenced. The timing can be coordinated or not, but in either case, the idea would be that uh, Mr. Crowley would handle the, uh, the uh, overlay uh, milling and um, pavement that ultimately has to occur when a, uh, when a cut into the street is made, uh, whether it be um, required by the city or not, he would handle and pay for the cost of all of that overlay work. So let me, if I may, turn it over to Mr. Beals just to detail better what's actually going on in the street. Good afternoon, good evening. Um, for the record, Ethan Beals, project manager at Hainer Swanson, doing business at 3 Congress Street here in Nashua. As Attorney Westgate had previously mentioned, our client's looking to construct a single family uh, house on a recently subdivided and now vacant lot. Um, the proposed dwelling will be serviced by gas, water by Penachuck Waterworks, municipal sewer, all of which are currently present on Lund Street. Um, in order to construct these utility services, Lund Street will have to be opened. The utility services designed, have been designed in close proximity to each other while still meeting all the applicable regulations in order to minimize the overall street disturbance. Recently, it came to our attention that there was a pavement failure in the center of Lund Street directly across from the subject property and in, in the general area that would be open to construct utility services. This is shown on the plans that were handed out today. I also want to make note that the letter that I sent out today um, was revised slightly. My original letter had an incorrect date when we went to check. Um, the street was originally paved in May of 2021 and the moratorium is up in May of 2026 as is now correctly um, noted on the plans and the, the attached letter. Um, to the best of my knowledge, um, I, Dan had just mentioned, I think, um, that the, the, the pavement failure is likely caused by an abutting um, city, uh, an abutting, an abutters sewer service um, and or the existing utilities in Lund Street and speaking with city engineering personnel this pavement failure is something that the city would likely want to address pretty quickly and will also need to open the street to do so. We are proposing to open Lund Street in order to construct the proposed utility services co service connections for the single family dwelling. All opening will be trench patched in, in accordance with section 285-13G. Um, as required, the entire width of the street will then be resurfaced 20 feet in each direction from the disturbance, commonly referred to as a mill and overlay. The final mill and overlay restoration will not be completed until the city and or their contractor has had the opportunity to investigate and address the underlying cause of the pavement failure issue in Lund Street. Thank you, uh, Ethan. So just to talk for a couple minutes about the uh, rationale for the granting of the waiver, uh, the Commission's well aware of Section 285.13G of the City Code that requires waivers to be granted for cutting into the city street uh, if it's to be done within five years after uh, pavement had been undertaken. The work that's to be done if a waiver is granted is, as Ethan stated, would be done by Mr. Crowley at his cost, including the milling and uh, overlay that was described, which goes from curb to curb and 20 feet each side of the, uh, the cut in. So the waiver is granted in two cases, as the Commission's well aware, either an emergency circumstance or hardship. Uh, we would respectfully submit that both are present here 
I think the emergency circumstances, as Mr. Hudson first indicated, uh, the uh, pavement failure or the, likely uh, as a result of matters concerning the uh, sewer hookup across the street from this property. I think the hardship circumstance does also exist as well because either one or the other is sufficient for the commission to make a finding to grant the waiver. Uh, I would just say a couple thoughts on hardship. The, the idea Mr. Crowley has, of course, is to have two nice houses completed. But if three years or so have to, be, uh, have to pass before the vacant lot can be uh, built with its new, uh, new uh, single-family home, then it's a bit of a burden on the existing one that's going to be renovated, uh, is being renovated, will be put on the market, a family ultimately will live in there, but they'll sort of be burdened by this uh, lack of activity on the vacant lot. So the, the hardship, I think, is thought of in the context of both lots, uh, not just the uh, singular circumstance involving the sewer and water connections described. So it's, uh, I don't know if it's fortuitous is the best word, but it's at least coincidental that these two circumstances happen now, uh, and I think there's a good way for them to be uh, solved timely, and obviously Mr. Crowley will work with uh, the city departments as, uh, as they indicate in terms of the timing. Um, he, he, ought, he would like to get going as soon as he can, of course, um, uh, but again, the ultimate result of the milling and overlay uh, is the final work that he would do once the city work is also completed. Uh, thank you for your time. All right. Any questions for the applicant? Commissioner Schoen. Uh, if I could just have a little clarification on a couple of things. Um, is it possible for um, these two lots, as some do, to share utilities? T typically, t typically, no. Um, the, the existing um, sewer connection to the other um, other lot is really kind of in unknown condition currently. Um, I, I think typically the city tries to, to get away from especially shared sewer connections because then there's a, a debate about who's responsible ultimately for a shared utility connection. Um, I, I also don't believe that, that either Penachuk um, nor the gas company prefers that if at all possible. Um, so, so to answer your question succinctly, in all cases they, they try to avoid that at all costs. Can you explain what it means that the existing um, single family dwelling is, their sewer connection is in unknown condition? It, it, it was. Nobody's checked. So, so to the best of our knowledge, it functions properly for the existing um, house that's currently there, but it, it has not been, we didn't video it, it wasn't videoed, it, we, we didn't do a flow check. We don't know truthfully, this, well, I believe the size of it's located on the plans. Um, but then you would, of course, need to run some calculations to make sure that it could still handle an additional um, unit. Um, but as I previously mentioned, the, in past projects, the, the city typically tries not to have a shared sewer connection, if at all possible, for different, um, different lots. Okay. Um, that kind of leads into the other question, which is um, the, uh, the failure of the of the pavement due to some not quite clear problem with somebody's sewer connection. That's a little vague. Can you be any more specific about what you suspect is going on there? So I can speak to that. So Dan Hudson, city engineer. Um, yeah, we expect there's, there's a problem with the sewer connection to the main um, or a problem along the sewer pipe itself. This is one of those scenarios where the resident owns their sewer service to the main, but being single-family resident, there's the provision in our ordinances that the city will make the repair if they pay $600. Uh, but, but before we would do that, we would need a video. We need them to prove that there's a condition problem. So what we're suffering from right now is we, we see a sinkhole in the road. We reached out to the resident. We've asked them for a video. They haven't come forth with that video yet. Um, so we're, we're kind of in a uh, in-between situation of not fully understanding what the issue is, but there is a depression in the pavement. There's certainly material from underneath the pavement is going somewhere, uh, given that the, there's the sewer pipe in the area. It makes perfect sense that that's where it's, that's where it's going. So there's some, there's some issue there that we're trying to, 
we're going to need to resolve. Yeah, I think that's the catch. Um, yeah. If you don't know, you know the resident's property that's responsible for the pavement failure? Yes or no? Are they responsible for the pavement failure? Do you failure? know who is responsible, which property, which lot has the sewer connection? Yes, I mean, faulty. I think from historic records, we know where the sewer services are. And I believe that from uh, the other staff is more familiar with this case than I am, but okay. I believe the, they, they represented me that this is in line with where the sewer service is for that uh, residence across the street. Across the street. Yeah. Okay. And do you see this um, being a problem with continuing on the timeline, whatever timeline um, the developers have uh, in uh, having this um, homeowner? Um, comply? No, I think uh, I think we'll reach agreement with them and be able to get this get our work done long before these guys will finish their work. Is my expectation. Okay, and what is that timeline for both? When does the city expect to have the pavement failure uh, taking the sewer connection fixed, and then they can get on with their work? Uh, I mean, usually, usually we can respond to a sewer issue such as this within a week or two of, of identifying it. So, uh, or basically having that video proof that enables us to go forward and make the repair. Um, so I can't predict exactly when we're going to get that video, but uh, our response time will be quick. Quick once we have once we have everything we need. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, their development process is going to take longer, much longer than that. I hope that's the case. I hope you. you yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to hold them up at all. No. Yeah. I, I think to, to reiterate, if I may, to reiterate a point that, that I had made is uh, we're committed to holding that second mill and overlay, the final street restoration, regardless of timing on the city until the city basically gives us the green light that they're comfortable with their fix. That, that's something that our client is, is kind of committed to and is happy to. All right, anyone else on this? Uh, Commissioner Shea. The, the language that establishes the moratorium, does it specify emergency? The word emergency was yes. used a number of times, and, and I'm just, I'm not used to every everything being referred to as an emergency. I'm just curious if there's like space in the language for non-emergency. I think it's great that we're developing uh, more housing, and I think that, um, you know, it's, it's Housing coming in is, an, is a non-emergency thing, but it's certainly something that we should be making space for um, with, with our decisions. Uh, so I'm just curious about that, if anybody knows. If I, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, yeah, please. So Section 285.13G of the, of the code, uh, just to read the start, construct, just sets forth the, uh, the five-year rule, of course, is in that section. Then construction shall not be printed on any street paved within the past five years, except for emergency or hardship purposes. So there are the two standards. So this would be a hardship example. When yeah, I think it's actually both. The emergency being the, given the, the, the sinkhole because of the proximity river. of it. Yeah. yeah. If okay. if we are 200 feet down the street from our connection versus the pavement failure, different issue. Yeah. But we're right next to each other. Thank you. Yeah, but just point of curiosity, language-wise, I, I appreciate that. Anyone else? Uh, Commissioner Moriarty. Yeah, I, I was just uh, reviewing this. I would say that I really don't think it falls into the hardship category, but I would agree that it is an emergency standard, and I would approve it uh, because of the emergency of the uh, uh, pavement uh, failure. That is my opinion. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no other questions or comments, uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the next item, E, is an informational item. Does anybody have any questions or comments on item E? Mr. Mayor, I, I would just make one comment that these, there's a quite a number of these this month, and that's because we opened permits in April, and so these are, there's a lot of work here by Liberty Utilities that was queued up over the winter months. As soon as permits open, then they... Uh, proceeded with that work. That's why there's so many this month versus other months. Okay. Uh, all right. So now we'll move on to uh, administration, and we have the director's report. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay.
Okay, this first slide, uh, we put out the uh, barriers for extended outdoor dining on May 1st. Weaver Brothers Construction did it. This is an ADA ramp um, shown on Timberline Drive and Arian Drive um, corner. On April, that was the work was done on April 20th. This is some milling done on Hammer Road by Sunshine Paving Subcontractor Garrity, and that was that work was performed on May 1st. The paving of course is now in full swing. This is some paving that was done on Countryside Drive on May 11th by Sunshine Paving. We celebrated Arbor Day on May 4th with Bicentennial Elementary School, um, which is always a really uh, fun day. The principal bought them all little hard hats, as you can see there. And uh, Eversource gave them a free sapling. So it, they, they uh, this year at Bicentennial, they did it with the kindergartners. So oh, it fun. was super cute. It was fun. Our spring plantings are going in. Uh, this is uh, some staff planting around the Civil War Monument. I don't know if, you, if you've seen the plantings on Main Street, but it's really nice. Looks great. This is a, another landscape bed um, at Campanella Way near Holman Stadium. Park and Rec staff have been hanging new banners at Holman Stadium. The SGXL sprayer that was purchased last year has been heavily utilized this spring. Pictured here is a plant protectant application which will enhance the growth and overall health of the turf. We've had a fair amount of park vandalism. Um, unfortunately, uh, the gazebo at Fields Grove um, was uh, torched and uh, we, the police are investigating, but we, it's a, it was a total loss, so it's really unfortunate. Um, and then we, we also had um, I think, I believe it was Mother's Day, we had three brush fires uh, in Mine Falls Park. So we're seeing more and more, van and, and other vandalism too. Um, some of it off color, unfortunately. So hopefully that uh, subsides. Uh, this is um, just a picture of Lions Field. We're preparing athletic fields. Maintenance is continuing, striping, raking, mowing. We cleaned up a uh, homeless encampment behind the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, good. That was all cleaned up, yeah. We, former homeless. Former homeless encampment, yeah. We've had a lot of, uh, we have a lot of homeless encampments right now. Um, it's becoming a, a bigger and bigger concern. Yeah. The, uh, this is on Greenwood Drive. The crews were preparing a sewer manhole. Needed to be raised for access. This is a picture of Amherst Street and the, and the crews cleaning curbs, sweeping, and some debris removal. This is Holman Stadium. We are prepping, uh, we poured a concrete pad uh, in anticipation of the Silver Knights will be putting um, a couple of very large coolers there uh, for their upcoming season, for their food. Freezer, uh, not closed freezer, sorry. Uh, this is New Hampshire Avenue. Uh, this is a uh, crew fixing lawn damage caused by our snow operations. We're pretty well done with. We have a few stragglers, I think, but we're pretty well done with all of our, our lawn repairs. This is Atherton Park, which is nearing completion. We're working on installing basketball hoops, and we're still completing under drains for water drainage, and we need to find a pave the basketball court. So that's coming along nicely. We also have a playground to put in. Uh, we had a, a water main break here at the landfill and that actually shut down water door for our new building. Um, but it was on the <laughs> landfill side and so um, that, that was repaired. And then now we've separated the connections. The connections are one connection. They are no longer. <laughs> uh, this is on Ledge Street. The sidewalk uh, was closed with a sinkhole along the canal. They're working on figuring out, figuring out a fix and a repair so that we prevent this from happening in the future. The wastewater uh, treatment facility, uh, all of our pump stations have Gorman Rupp pumps now, so they, were, they received training on those pumps. There are two wastewater mechanics working uh, together here to align a waste activated sludge pump. Uh, wastewater electrician and mechanic working together to repair one of the polymer makeup units in the thickening room. 
we are um, measuring and having parts made because of long lead times. We're having a difficult time, so we're we're doing more more of our own fabricating so we can get Great. repairs done. The first household hazardous waste collection was held on April 22nd, and we had 137 households from Nashua participate. That was a success. The diesel fuel tank at the Fort Hills landfill has been repainted, relabeled, and inspected. And the Four Hills Landfill and Recycling Center will be closed on Monday, May 29th for Memorial Day. So all trash and recycling collections will be delayed that, day, that week. Any questions or uh, thoughts, comments for the director? Commissioner Shea. Um, so there was a hullabaloo on, on social media about um, the ADA ramps, uh, the, the, the ramps, and then an adjacent tree bucking some uh, sidewalk, and the uh, juxtaposition of accessibility at the corner versus not accessibility several feet beyond. And I wanted to ask, so, so we have a, an extensive um, uh, ramp repair and installation program going right mm -hmm. now. Um, and is that, I believe, is there federal funds in that program? No. No. So it's it's something we're all we're doing in house. And where was the what was the where was the discussion? I'm guessing about? it was on the Civic Sounding Board. But I mean, where where in the I, I'd side? have to look it up, and I and I can get that info to you. Um, but but basically, um, you know, right my, it, before I go back and and offer some insight, um, we are undergoing a, a citywide. ADA ramp um, replacement and installation program, where, there, where some of them it's just straight up cement and it's there's no um, compliant textured ramp and all that business. Um, we are also in tandem doing a sidewalk inventory. Is that right? So we are we are improving all of the ramps as part of the paving program. Okay. So as we pave streets, we're we're uh, redoing all of the ramps. That's that's a good specific yeah. piece. Of yeah. It. Uh, but we also, we did do a, a, a complete sidewalk inventory and now we are working on putting together um, a plan for up, upgrading all of our, um, so a transition plan to update all of our sidewalks. Okay. So, but there are a lot of sidewalks in disrepair. Yep. And, and, no question. and so the ramps are being done in advance of paving that's coming for one of those roads that, at least. Mm -hmm. And then right now we're, we're kind of assessing these things and, and identifying where improvements can be made and prioritizing them and then coming back with, with a suggested plan and a discussion about funding and, and how to make that happen. Correct. Okay. Um, I, I, think, I think that's it. I'd, it like to, I'd like to know though if you yeah, could, I'll could let, let me know, you know where the ramp yep. maybe we can address. Yeah, and it sounds like it's maybe not a, a busy neighborhood. It sounds like it's, it's uh, like in, you know, in the north end, there's a lot of sidewalks, but also, like, you can just walk in the street and it's, mm -hmm. it's no big deal. Um, it sounds like it's, it's one of those areas, but I'll, I'll get you the info. Sure. And I'm, I'm bummed John isn't here, but I'm going to share my thought before, um, uh, before I forget about it. Um, I'm, I'm curious to know if I, I believe that we have a contract for recyclables that, that go to a facility. Do we have like an agreement where we send all of it to someone and they process it? Yeah. Casella. Um, You're talking a single stream? Yeah. 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 Casella. And so my, my question is, um, is there any value to pre-sorting? Um, no, not that I think we can accomplish this citywide, um, but as I pulled up and, and offloaded a, a million billion Amazon boxes in, into one of those, uh, the, the coverings here, the thought hit me, I, I was like, I wonder if, if cardboard just by itself or something just by itself um, has a higher value and a lower likelihood that, that will uh, qualify for contamination. Um, and, and I'm curious about that. I don't, It's I don't, a good question. Yeah. So um, as we saw our recycling costs escalate, um, we, we certainly asked those questions. Um, and the answer uh, that we received was no. Um, because it goes to a material recovery facility, 
it's it's separated there anyway, mm -hmm. so it would be a waste for us to spend the time and money separating it here. Okay. Um, or, unfortunately, or even if one of the three bins it used to was... be that paper had a little more value, yeah. um, and it, and it. What about aluminum? Not now. Aluminum, aluminum a little bit. Yep. Doesn't that have the most value? Yep. Yep. It does. But still, not a, not a, not a lot of value right now. Yeah, I, was thinking, I was thinking as far as like volume goes and, and stuff that, that could be contaminated, I, I wouldn't be surprised if like the cardboard is like the most contaminated thing. I, I don't know. Um, uh, well, we don't like just pizza boxes. Just because it gets wet and you have oh, pizza boxes. Yeah, pizza boxes. Weird tape. Yeah. And Not so, so if pizza boxes are contaminated, if there's, you know, if there's food in them, then they're not yeah. recyclable. They, they should be thrown in the trash. Um, but now that we have our recycling covered, that's helped a lot because it's it's not quite as contaminated um, and it's not as heavy. It's lighter yep. um, going out, so that's helped a lot. And also, it's helped the prices come down some, and other people bid on on our recycling because they don't want it when it's really wet. Casella mm -hmm. so. did come in a while back, maybe before your tenure, and maybe. to talk about it, okay. you probably would remember. Yeah. And one point they made was that glass has no value. Right. And in fact, damages the separation machines, and they only landfill it anyway. So glass is better in the waste in the uh, garbage. Hmm. Hmm. Of course, we and we do have our program here where our rates are reduced a little bit because we take we take uh, back the crushed glass and use it in our setback and and for cover. So, so there's a, there's a balance there. There's a little bit, of a, yeah. 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 And do we only get our own glass back, or do we take glass in general? We take glass in general. Yeah. So. Glass doesn't really add anything to recycling because it ends up in a landfill somewhere. Anyway. Can we get like a like a rate on the amount of glass that we take back? Yeah, we do. Hmm. It, re it reduces. Yeah, and it re yeah it, redu it reduces our cost by fifteen dollars a ton. So if if we are if we're sending glass and then we're taking glass back, if we weren't sending glass, it would be a better value proposition for us. But then we'd have to consider landfill space. Basically. If we put our glass in, in oh, our I, landfill, yeah, right, yeah, right. That's and yeah. and it would be a challenge trying to sort that here because yeah. we d we just don't have the equipment. I mean, we could buy the equipment, but I don't, it wouldn't. I don't. It's not, wouldn't be worth our while. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So I think technically we're still on director's report on any comments or questions <laughs> about that. But if there's nothing else, we go to the commissioner's comments. Um, maybe we blurred the line there, I don't know, but uh, uh, Commissioner's comments? Commissioner Shea. I'm a stickler for propriety. I feel like Commissioner Moriarty should be seated over here, because he's like the, the vice chair of the committee, and I should be on the far end as the other end. You know, you know what's sort of interesting? Yeah. Everybody sort of moved there. Everybody moved, there. Everybody moved, there. Everybody moved oh, okay. around. So. Yeah. We'll I'm happy. If, yeah, I mean, if you're happy, I'm, I'm happy. happy. That, that's what matters to me. <laughs> this is the way you're seated in, in, in the yeah, auditorium. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how I had it. So. Oh, okay. He's got the best window. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's sunshine. Sure. <laughs> uh, oh. um, so there was a meeting for Ward 3 at the Hunt Community Building two weeks ago, and there were a lot of very annoyed residents from Jackson Falls. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about trash, they were talking about crime, and they were also all really annoyed about sound and the level of motorcycle noise. And the police were there and they said, look, we, we pull people over regularly. You may not see us doing it. And they explained that there, I didn't even know this, that there's a way on a souped up motorcycle that you can actually switch out. Like if you're if you're running at uh, too high a noise level, there's something that you can do. There's like a switch where hmm. they will pull them over, and it will not record at the decibel level that they just had a few moments ago. But they are still the police are still um, pulling people over and talking about this. But one of the things the residents requested was a, a sign entering downtown that said something like, um, you know, ordinance number whatever whatever. I was, and they, they all turned to me and said, so you can make this happen. I had no idea that that was part of the, the Board of Public Works Commission. So uh, Trish Klee has sent me a list of all of the ordinances regarding sound. 
Um, so I wondered what is the next step to make this happen, to get a sign posted. Mike Ballantyne suggested why don't we just do what they do in South Carolina, which is a little sign that says you are entering downtown, whatever, shh. And I didn't know if we had the power to make that happen. So <laughs> I, I, it's not, it's sort of a public works thing, but not completely. Um, I usually say no to signage, and okay. here's why. I get so many requests. That's what I figured. And if we start putting up signs that everybody requests, we are going to have tremendous sign pollution. But having said that, if the mayor or the board thinks that, I don't think that that's going to help. I don't think know. it's going to help either. Um, so if it's if it's a, if it's a, I like to look at it. I think these it, guys do this on purpose. Yeah. yeah. I like to look at it as a safety issue. If it's like genuinely a safety issue and it's something that can help, um, then then I would be in favor. But. I don't think it's going to help, and I and I I just I would caution uh, you know happy to do whatever the board decides, but I would just caution you that I get a, we get a lot of sign requests, um, yeah. and and usually we say no for that reason because we have we just have so much signage all these things. yeah I mean, and then it becomes a maintenance issue right right so I I mean I'm just perfectly two, happy just to go back to the sense. board three meeting and said you know say we find that it doesn't help so is there something else. And then, of course, they brought up the railroad tracks, and I was like, okay, we're, we've all, we're, we're, yeah, we're I said there are all kinds of people, and, and Trish told them, she's been, you know, living yeah. with CSX, so, yeah. but the other, the other thing was, um, I didn't quite know how to respond to this, because they were talking about the trash, and I understand it's a real problem, but when the residents of Jackson Falls were talking to us, they said, well, we've been told that we can't go on the train tracks, and they were told, absolutely, you cannot go on the train tracks. We, we can't do it as a municipality. We can't go and pick sure. up their trash. So then they asked the police out and out, well, if we go down there and clean it up, will we be in trouble? And they said, well, do you mean, is it, are the national police going to come and arrest you? No. So um, I did not understand quite how to respond like they're looking at me and I'm like it's not my purview to give you permission or not give you permission to do that as I understand it correct correct okay so yeah, we, they're going to do what they're going to do and I understand if you're that, sitting yeah. there and you're looking out at a pile of trash every day and you have a bunch of neighbors who all have you know the tools and a lot of trucks you're going to pick it up yourself so if you can yeah, we, we do, that, that's correct. That we, we don't have the authority to go on the tracks, unfortunately. Okay. Wastewater, in fact, has uh, Dave's gone, but um, <coughs> there's there are tracks, and they're not even supposed to cross the tracks at the wastewater treatment plant. So oh. um, that that's okay. you know the rule. But I certainly understand the residents' concern. Yeah. Yeah. Is that really the purview of code enforcement? Um, for for the railroad. Not specifically for the railroad, but if um, you're living in an area, maybe you're a budding property or um, a nearby property is becoming very trashy and overgrown. Um, what is the? Do you know what the um, what the sequence of events has to be, and is it through court code enforcement that residents? Because it, it decreases the property values. It's a, it, it can be a real problem. So that's a great that's a great question. If it is if it's on private property, then it is a code enforcement issue. If it's in the public right of way, then it would be public works. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's okay. the way that works. I see. So if you see, for instance, unsightly trash somewhere or a mattress uh, that needs to be picked up, but and it's on the side of the road, we'll go pick it up if it's abandoned or, or whatever. You can just call. If it's call between us. the sidewalk and the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, pretty much. Or, 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 or on the sidewalk. On the sidewalk. Yeah. yeah, on the sidewalk or even a little bit into the property because the, the right of way does go onto the property. But it, it not varies. I can't tell you if it's three feet or five feet. It's sometimes it's ten feet. Um, I'd have to I'd have to look at that. But but yeah, we, we it do. It varies pick up. by the street. You know, the size of the right of way. The width varies by the street. So it is code enforcement if it's, if it's on private on property. property. Correct. Because yes. we've had neighbors come to us because our, our neighborhood is increasingly, uh, it is increasing the number of rentals, rental properties over time. And we've had residents come to talk to my husband because he was the alderman and say, you know, my neighbors have completely trashed their property, the rental property. 
what can we do? And they call code, code enforcement, and code enforcement says there's, you know, there's nothing we can do. Well, it's because, you know, they have to find a violation of the housing code. And, like, there's a street, there's a house, say, on Manchester Street, you know, where there's a lot of... You know, on the corner? Yes. Across from Janelle's? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's one so, of them. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, having asked code enforcement to look at that, um, you know, they go out and, you know, keeping a tire or whatever they've got there, I forget, it depends, it varies, I think, a little bit from day to day, but keeping tires or old machines or whatever, you know, don't violate the building code. It has to be something specific that's a fire hazard or... Or something that, you know, we'd have to look in detail at the building code, but, you know, it had, or the housing code, the housing code, but if there's, you know, which is directed more at, you know, safety and accessibility into the property and things like that. Um, so uh, the thing to do is contact code enforcement, just have them take a look at them, see if they can find it. It might violate the code. If one neighbor calls in and to code enforcement and says, you know, here's a problem, can you come look at it? Will, will they come out? Or are they obliged yes. to go out? Yeah, they'll come out. And if they don't, you could ask for help on that. And um, the, yes, we can definitely get them to go out. No question. We like the one you're talking about. Because we've worked with them before to help clean yeah. up properties. So, yeah. We have a, a neighbor who has spoken to us who shares a duplex. So they actually share the property. So he owns one half of the building. And the, the owner of the other half of the building and the rest of the property um, is not taking care of it. So he's been taking care of it. He's been cutting their grass. He's been what you know, taking their trash. Uh, Roger Street. Hmm. And, uh, wow. and he said he, he calls and he calls and he, he's called the police and the police say, well, there's nothing that we can do about it. There's no violation here. You know, they're not doing anything illegal. But The double house there? Yeah. One and one and three, yeah. and um, those so are really nice. That's a really nice. Otherwise, a very nice building. It, it is a very nice building, but he's in a position where he can't take care of it. And you know, the neighbors half of it anymore, and he can't sell it mm -hmm. because nobody's going to want to buy that property. And is that a condo situation where it's sold no. half and half, or is it? It's um, it's a duplex. It's a side by side duplex. Yeah. Um, single owners. And the other half is a rental, and he owns his half. Oh, nice. So it's um, he's kind of in a bind, and he's a he's a good neighbor, and he contributes to the neighborhood a lot. And we, you know, we kind of, you know, put up our hands. So we don't know what to do. We don't know how to how to help. Well, we, I can, you know, we can get code enforcement to go out there and look, they can check it out. Yeah. The, the problematic side is one or three. One. I think it, it'll probably be obvious just from looking, <laughs> which is the problematic side, but... Um, I can call that if you want me. Sure. We didn't know whose jurisdiction it was and what. Someone had said that there has to be six individual complaints against a specific no. property before no. something will happen, but that's apparently rumor. Yeah, yeah. there don't have to be six. Thank you. I have a question. So, all the beautiful flowers, where do they come from? Where do they come from? Kabiki House, down in Sudbury, Mass. They're oh. one of the biggest wholesale uh, greenhouse growers in the Northeast. Oh, okay. Because, so I mean, it is looking the quite quality, nice. Uh, I consider the quality to be exceptional. Yeah. So, yeah. They seem to hold <laughs> up really well. Well, that's the staff. Yeah. <laughs> that gets back to the park and rec staff. Yeah. We constantly go around and water them and fertilize them and take care of them. But yes. I had before the meeting I had I had um, had a call from Trish Clee about walking all over with these two guys all over Greeley Park and for the easement and I said it'd be a really nice gesture from that company to you know, buy a lovely specimen tree because the city is being so cooperative with them. 
And she said, well, I can't suggest that. And I said, well, I can't suggest it either, except as a citizen, and I could, because I really think the city has really, from what I have heard, people are saying, you know, everybody has done a really good job of trying to make it as palatable for the residents living there as possible while not doing super amount of damage to the park. Nobody wants any damage to the park. So I think, I think it would be a nice, maybe I'll just write a letter as a citizen saying it would be a really good idea to do this because those kinds of, the kinds of trees that are really old, well, I, I heard that the ones that they're gonna take out are just scrubby, is mm -hmm. this true? Yes. So, but they could make up for the scrubby tree by giving us some kind of magnificent tree that we could put a little thing on. Oh, that's a bad suggestion. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Moriarty. Yeah. So, uh, Director, I received an email, I guess all the commissioners did, regarding uh, an open house of this facility on, I think it's June 8th. Yes. Uh, Thursday. I wonder, is that open to the public or is that just meant for the commissioners? Um, it's, open to the, it's open to the public. It has to be because of the, the fact that it's, uh, but, you know, we're, we're not really going to, you know, announce it, I think, too heavily. Um, just for obvious reasons, you know, we don't want to have enough snacks. <laughs> snacks and also, you know, technical form. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't want to. So it's it's quasi public. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it, it, is, it is. It is public, and it will be posted. Um, it, we have to because we have, we'll, we'll have forums. Oh, and do we have to RSVP to the thing no. for the Holman Stadium? Oh, oh, for the Holman Stadium that John no. Frieden sent out? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You should, if you want to go to that, you should RSVP for that. Okay. Yes. I, I, I actually won't be able to go to that, but. Is that the second? Mm -hmm. That's the ninth. No. No. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not the ninth. It's the week before. Fourth. The, the third, week before. The, the yes. third. I thought it was the third, too. The third? The second or the third? It's a, yeah, it's the second or the third. I'm not sure exactly. Okay. They can probably find out. It's a Friday, anyway. It's, it's second? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other commissioners' yeah, comments? Right. Commissioner Shea. Are the... Um, uh, the banners up on uh, Veterans Memorial Parkway. No, they, not yet, Commissioner. Not yet? No, they're not yet. Will they be up for the weekend, do you know? Uh, we're planning on doing that Monday morning. Okay. So. All right. Well, it's good that they'll be up for Monday. I, I know that getting a uh, uh, crew for the, the bucket truck and everything is, is tough because I think that there's yeah, less so people. We tried calling it out for Friday morning. I didn't get any takers. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for, uh, for getting those up. I saw people putting up the flags today. Yes, those are up. Nice. Uh, um, any other commissioners' comments? All right. We will then go to uh, personnel. Good evening, guys. Um, item A, uh, Commissioner Lemon. Still in yep. the public. Oh, we're still in public. Okay. I motion to approve and unseal the non public minutes for personnel from the Board of Public Works budget meeting of April 11th, 2023, and the Board of Public Works meeting of April 27th, 2023. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the resignation of Matthew Collins, Operator 2, Wastewater Department, effective May 21st, 2023. Any, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item C, which is now a non-public session, Alderman Moriarty. Alderman, you've got a promotion. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> happens all the time. <laughs> I, I move by roll call that the board go into a non-public session pursuant to RSA 91-A3 Roman numeral 2B, the hiring of any person as a public employee. And that's roll call, right? Yes, roll call. 
Commissioner Present. Moriarty? Yes. Commissioner Shoneman? Yes. Commissioner Lemon? Yep. Commissioner Shea? Yes. Mayor Dauntis? Yes. And motion passes, and we will go into non-public session for the reasons stated. Okay. All right, thank you for coming back. So we're now in public session. Uh, Commissioner Moriarty. Thank you, Mayor. I move by roll call to seal the minutes of the Board of Public Works personnel non-public meeting of May 25th, 2023, until such time as the majority of the board votes that the purpose of the confidentiality would no longer be served. And is that a roll call? Roll call. Commissioner Moriarty? Yes. Commissioner Shoneman? Yes. Commissioner Lemon? Yes. Mayor Donches? Yes. Motion passes. And therefore, Commissioner Moriarty. <laughs> I, I move to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 And the meeting of the Board of Public Works is adjourned at 521 p.m.